going through some stuff a little while ago, picking what I should get rid of and what I should sell on eBay, and most of it was Apple stuff. One of the things I found was an original Apple EyeSight. Now, I actually had two of these, because my wife had one and I had one. I opened up the first one that I found because they're not really worth anything on eBay and there's a million of them out there. So, eh, don't really need it. So obviously I had to open it up on the way to the trash can because, you know, curiosity, I've never opened up one of these before. And it was surprisingly interesting. I thought it was gonna be fairly simple, but you gotta keep in mind that this is one of the first webcams and it's a firewire webcam too so it makes it pretty neat i mean they they really did a good job on this camera i, I really like it. i mean it's gigantic by today's standards and essentially useless it's only like 640 by 480 firewire who has that on their motherboard any anymore I have a freaking card in my computer to get my computer a FireWire interface, but it is a really cool product. So included, you'd get stuff like this FireWire cable, which was very thin, and I never liked this. There was something unsettling about a really thin FireWire cable, especially since they didn't do anything to keep you from using it on something else. Like I did not trust this on like a external hard drive. Never liked these things. There is a table mount that has a little peel off sticker so you can stick it to something. There's also this friction fit for an LCD where you actually put it on and then you turn this and this extends ever so slightly and grips it onto the screen, which is a really clever idea. I like that one. There's also a small magnetic holder for sticking to the side of a monitor. And finally, there's the actual interface to plug into this thing. The way this works is you run your firewire cable into it and then this can either go in here, you'd have to run the cable first or it can rest in this one and it would insert into the camera and give you pivoting so a really cool design I really liked it the camera itself has a three element lens with a one quarter inch CCD it has autofocus and f 2.8 and it's got this cool power control this not only turns on and off the unit but it also has a little iris to cover up the sensor for privacy. I really do love the industrial design of this thing with the integrated pan tilt and the holes through all of it. It's aluminum. The holes provide a little ventilation because um, Firewire provides, I believe, 12 volts of power, so they probably have to step it down with a buck converter or something. There are a couple screws that hold this thing together. They're very tiny. The module itself has a plastic chassis with a bunch of PCBs inside. I was kind of blown away by just how many PCBs are actually in this thing. I mean, it looks like it's a teardown of like a high-speed camera, but it's actually just this little 640 by 480 FireWire camera. There's a little mesh piece of cloth on top, and we've got a whole bunch of uh, tabs for grounding and shielding. This uses a split case. Once you pop off all the little tabs, the top half of this just comes right off and you can see all the circuit boards. There's a whole bunch of them. There's also a little flat flex cable running to the, the CCD. Oh, two of them. Oh, no, wait, that's running under there. This is the main board with its little flex PCB. Well, it's a semi-rigid flex PCB. This is a stereo analog to digital converter. And this just connects with a little flex cable as part of it. And inside, there is a freaking DSP, <laughs> a large uh, sharp chip. I believe this is a bit of flash. This is probably memory. And there's some Sony, uh, Sony chip and another TI chip. These are probably handling the interface to the CCD, which connects on this side. There's also a chunk of metal attached for heat sinking. There's a bunch of connectors that connect to various things like the LED on the top and the FireWire interface. Oh, that'll be the FireWire 
chip, most likely. And can you imagine this being in a modern webcam, a freaking DSP and stuff? I mean, they are basically, I mean, because they're, they're internal to the webcam chips, but I mean, now it's just a single chip the size of this, which is the sensor and all the digital electronics. There's also this small board, which is the power supply. You can tell by all the inductors. Firewire connector is just integrated into this little plastic housing. This is the sensor module. We've got a flat flex cable going over to the autofocus, I believe. There's a couple, four wires running over to that. And there's a semi-rigid flex PCB here. A little chip on here, it's probably another driver. Oh, taking this off reveals the rather large, well, thick CCD. Big uh, tantalum capacitor there and a chunk of metal in there to act as a heat sink. And that'll be the IR filter. You can see the coating on it. This is the mechanism for closing the iris. This will just send the signal to say that uh, the iris is closed or open to control the power of this thing. Shutter assembly is pretty much exactly how you'd expect it to be. It's just a rotating mechanism to close these little veins and there's just a little piece of plastic protecting the lens and inside yeah it's just another piece of aluminum with plastic to support the mechanism there's a tiny hall effect sensor that's going to be what's detecting whether or not the shutter is open or closed to power on or off the unit this flat flex cable carries uh, power to the autofocus motor it's a little coil and there's also a little hall effect sensor that goes there even the autofocus system in this thing is, is complex relative to any other modern uh, webcam with the exception of maybe the uh, C920s and that sort of uh, level of webcam where they have mechanical autofocus. This thing's got the little motor and it's got moving lens elements. If you've looked inside a modern one of these, it's there's like nothing in it. I mean, it really is just like a little plastic lens and that's it. There was even a spring in here that flew off somewhere. Yeah, there's the uh, optics. It's just three pieces of glass. I think there's one. No, it's just, they're all in here. I've got the Sony ICX098BQ sensor underneath the microscope now. There's not a great deal on this thing. It's mostly just the sensor there isn't the same level of processing that's on a uh, modern chip. All right, at 10 times magnification, we can start to see some test pads or at least bonding pads that aren't used. Some test patterns, more patterns. There's the uh, Sony ICX098 model number. And if we go into the center of the die, you can start to really see the pattern of the sensors, the Bayer pattern, the red, green, and blue. There's a lot more green than anything else. Standard Bayer pattern sensors have twice as many green pixels as red or blue because the human eye is more sensitive to green. That one's a test point. You can see the little marker where it was uh, used. Unfortunately, I can't get any closer than 10x because the ceramic body of the sensor is way too high. I'd have to sand it down and it's just not worth doing. You can see how there are different colors moving towards the edge. I believe that's the masked off pixels because the sensor itself is larger. And most sensors are larger than the actual effective number of pixels. This one I believe has 330,000 pixels, but it physically has 350,000. The extras are used for things like dark frame subtraction and calibration, and just they're just masked off to get the correct sensor size. So I just wanted to get a quick video done on this thing before I got rid of it, just because it is a pretty fascinating device, despite the fact that it's just a webcam. It's just so densely packed with electronics relative to what we use now. It makes it kind of cool. And I can see why they were charging. I think it was $149 initially. I think they dropped the price down to $100 and then like $79 or something eventually. You can see why the initial price was high. You know, they had to buy in DSPs and whatnot. I am holding the wrong screwdriver. <laughs> 